It was a statement win from De La Fuente, Spain, emerging 3-0 winners against Croatia, a result that will have many of the big nations keeping their eyes on La Roja. The performance wasn't nearly as smooth sailing as the result suggests, so let's take a look at the tactics. In controlled possession, Spain opted for a two-man build-up, with both fullbacks remaining wide. There was no need for a third man as Croatia primarily defended with just a single forward, so Spain naturally had the numerical advantage. Modric would occasionally try to turn it into a man-to-man -man press, but the potential of letting Spain have the numerical advantage in the central area meant that for the most part, he remained deep, ensuring that Croatia could cover the central regions man-to-man. -man. Croatia defending the central area so well meant that it was the wide regions providing the opportunity for Spain, and the key word for Spain in this match was asymmetry. Where in recent tournaments, Spain have had too many passes and not enough penetration, the wingers in this match had plenty of running power, and when Spain tended to begin play down the left-hand side to draw Croatia across, it meant that Yamal could start extremely wide. And Carbajal also stayed wide, but rather than looking to overlap, he was primarily there to provide an outlet pass for Yamal if he was not able to get past his man. And Yamal's wide positioning, which allows switches in isolation, comes to the fore in the second Spanish goal, as Spain instinctively switched the ball to him so he can have a run at Josko Gvardio, eventually leading to the Ruiz goal. But the dynamic down the left was slightly different for Spain. Of course, a major ploy was still to get Williams in behind, but rather than hug the touchline like Yamal, he moved into this inside channel, causing all sorts of problems. He made it difficult for Croatia to decide whether it was Stanisic or Shutalo who would pick him up. And when the centre-back did, his superior speed meant that he would be well positioned to take advantage of the space that was created. At the same time, when Stanisic tried to come narrow to assist, where we saw Carvajal being conservative down the right-hand side, Cucurella was giving attacking license to make late runs and try to get crosses in high up the pitch or still find Williams. But there were disadvantages to this for Spain, as having both fullbacks wide and Rodri fairly isolated meant that they could look vulnerable in the wide regions, and Croatia would quickly transition through these areas, a big problem that Spain will have to address if they are to go deep in the tournament. But let's also take a quick look at what Spain were doing on the defensive end of things. When Croatia were looking to build from the goal kick, with the centre-backs assisting the goalkeeper, Spain were hyper-aggressive in the press. Pedri and Morata formed a front two, but crucially both men would look to keep a Croatian midfielder in their cover shadow. So that meant whichever way Croatia started, a forward could press with Ruiz in support as he was looking to cover two midfielders. And this would naturally either force a pass into the fullback, where the winger could then aggressively press, or alternatively, it would force a risky pass infield, where the Spanish midfielders were ready to win the ball back and Spain were able to force turnovers in threatening positions on more than one occasion. But the battle in the wide regions between the Croatian fullbacks and Spanish wingers was interesting. Both Meyer and Kramaric tended to come infield, while Brozovic dropped deeper in the build-up, and this allowed Gvardio and Stanisic super high, as you can see in the average positions. Both Williams and Yamal were not the most disciplined when tracking back, meaning that we did see Croatia being able to make inroads, particularly down Gvardiol's side, and he managed to get into some dangerous positions in the final third, and it will be interesting to see if the Spanish manager addresses these glaring weaknesses going forward. But it did present a massive opportunity on the transition for Spain, and now Williams and Yamal would have acres of space on the counter-attack. And the opening goal was the perfect example of this, as both Gvardiol and Stanisic have committed to pushing high. So when the ball breaks down, the two centre-backs are completely isolated, not knowing whether to cover the space out wide or Morata through the centre. It leads to the easiest pass right through the heart of the defence and a Morata finish. An impressive result for Spain, but the performance, not so much, meaning rapid improvement is needed going forward. From a tactical standpoint, De La Fuente earns a solid 6, while Dalic earns a 5, but drop your ratings down below. And while you're waiting for the next match, check out these two videos on two of the most impressive club teams from last season. Click on screen now.